Good morning, football fans. Welcome to another edition of Gridiron Live. As always, live in the heart of City Market with our good friends at Wild Wing Cafe, Frank Sulkowski, Stephanie Ferrat. You know how we do this each and every Sunday right. morning during the football season. We're here talking food fun and, of course, the pigskin. And, Stephanie, first of all, it's Sunday morning. Now we get a chance to look back on a crazy Saturday in college football. Yeah, a crazy Saturday. We're, we're talking about Notre Dame putting a zero against Michigan. And then you've got the Virginia Tech Hokies, which I got to cover for a couple years, and I'm a Hokie fan, I'm going to say it. But they knocked off number eight Ohio State at Ohio State, a big win for the Hokies. But there was also some big games here in town as well. That's right. We had a Coastal Empire clash over in Statesboro. You had Georgia Southern taking on Savannah State. Of course, the big storyline there, the Eagles home opener in their first season in the FBS. A big crowd on hand, over 23,000 people in the stands to watch that matchup. Also had Georgia Tech in action at Tulane as Tulane opened up their new football stadium. You had Clemson looking to rebound, South Carolina looking to rebound. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights. Military Appreciation Day in Statesboro and Georgia Southern was ready to battle from the get-go. Eagles first drive, quarterback Kevin Ellison throwing for Zach Walker, who makes the catch deep in Savannah State territory. Two plays later, Eagles soar into the end zone. Matt Breida up the middle and into the end zone with the point after was 7-0. A couple minutes later, the Southern offense back on the field and back into the end zone. Ellison throwing deep for Kentrella Showers, who makes the catch in the end zone. 14-0 Eagles and the route was on. Later in the first quarter, Fabian Upshaw now in at quarterback. He keeps, and he's going to walk in for the touchdown with the point after. It was 21-0 Georgia Southern. The Savannah State offense having trouble getting going. Tigers throwing down the middle, but Deion Stanley going to come up with the interception for the home team. Eagles turn the turnover into some points. Upshaw back to pass. He sends one deep for Showers, who hauls in his second touchdown reception of the game. A point after fails. It was 27-0. Following a Savannah State turnover, Georgia Southern extends their lead. Breida again getting the call. He goes in from a couple yards out, 34-0. The Tiger offensive troubles continues. Antoine Williams coming through to register the sack. The Georgia Southern offense continuing to click on the option. Pitch goes to Monte Crockett. He's got the nifty move along the sideline. He's in, but the officials say he stepped out of bounds. But after a replay, Crockett stayed in bounds. Another touchdown for the Eagles. It was 41-0. Plenty to cheer about for Eagle fans, young and old, on this Saturday. Eagles rack up 695 yards of total offense, 599 yards on the ground. Georgia Southern rolls over Savannah State, 83-9, the final from Statesboro. Next week's opponent for the Eagles, Georgia Tech on the road at Tulane. The Yellow Jackets' Tony Zenon and Tim Byerly combined for four touchdowns and led the Yellow Jackets to a 38-21 win over Tulane Saturday afternoon. Zach Lasky led the Yellow Jackets with 86 yards rushing yards, while quarterback Justin Thomas ran for 70 yards on just 10 carries. The Georgia Tech defense forced three two-lane turnovers, picking off Tanner Lee three times. Georgia Tech improves to 2-0 on the season, heading into their first ever matchup with Georgia Southern. The South Carolina Gamecocks looking to bounce back after their big loss to Texas A&M to open the season. Gamecocks taking on East Carolina. Mike Davis finds some running room, and he finds pay dirt. 36-yard touchdown made it 7-6 Gamecocks. Second quarter, first and goal, Chris Harrison going to run 10 yards for the touchdown. East Carolina went on top 13-7. Later, Dylan Thompson to Mike Davis. Davis will step out of bounds just short of the end zone. Next play, Davis for the score. South Carolina takes a 17-13 lead, and the Gamecocks go on to win this one 33-23. How about Clemson taking on South Carolina State? Cole Stout looking to lead the Tigers to their first win of the year. 17-0 already. Stout finds our Tavis Scott for the 37-yard touchdown. Stout would end up with 302 yards passing. Deshaun Watson to J.J. McCullough for the 34-yard touchdown pass. Tigers pouring it on. Later, to Darius Wiley going to get picked off by Jadar Johnson, who goes 60 yards for the pick six. Clemson. Big over South Carolina State. 73-3 the final, the Tigers' highest point total in 33 years. All right, well, with the NFL coming back this season, it's always going to be we're talking about lucky buckets here at wild wings and all you got to do you buy a bucket of beer you get a magnet if you get more magnets more chances you have to win things like this dartboard that will be given away today it is a budweiser dartboard and also too 
you get to put your name in the drawing for even more prizes. We're going to be giving away prizes all year. You could get two tickets to Music Midtown in Tennessee. So there's a lot of reasons to come down here and enjoy. And I mean, you can walk away with this great looking. I mean, look at, look, not with Frank, but look. <laughs> spend enough money, I, you know, you I'll come with it too. Yeah, Frank will come with it if, if you spend enough money. But yeah, come down here, get a lucky bucket, get some great food. But we're, gonna, we're live right here at Wild Wing Cafe. We're going to be right back, so stick around for more Gridiron Live coming up after the break. And welcome back to Gridiron Live. As always, coming to you from the heart of City Market, Gridiron Live brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. We'll be heading inside in just a little bit to talk all kinds of, all about the good things they got going on here at Wild Wing. Right now, though, we want to talk high school football, and now everybody in the state is in action, and we saw a lot of teams, some pretty good matchups last Friday night. That's right. And with good matchups, you get some good wins, some good losses, but let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at some of the high school football action from Friday night. The Wildcats fired up to take the field after watching everyone else play the last couple of weeks. First year head coach Josh Eads looking to get things started on the right foot, and it does. Wildcats, they open with a heaping helping of Ronnie Harris up the middle for 12 yards to get the offense going. Later, Harris going to get the call again. This time, he's going to find the path to the end zone. It will be a touchdown. Richmond Hill with the point after. It was 7 to nothing. More from the Wildcats in the second quarter, this time through the air. Xavier Bryant, the long throw to DJ O'Neill, who makes the catch for the touchdown. The point after would fail 13-0 Wildcats. Richmond Hill fans loving it. The Johnson offense looking for a spark. It's going to be Raquan Green going to be sacked, but somehow he gets out of it and picks up nearly 30 yards and the first down. But the Richmond Hill defense puts things on lockdown. Smashers going deep, but Montrell Washington there to break up the pass at the goal line. Richmond Hill goes on to win this one, 20 to nothing, the final. Toombs County taking on Vidalia. This one a defensive battle in the first quarter. Jalen Mobley with the sack of Jordan Black on fourth down. And the Bulldogs will get the ball. But the next drive for Vidalia, Quintarius Jones with the carry. The ball's going to be popped out. But Indians luckily fall on it to keep the drive going. A few plays later now in the second quarter, Jordan Black is going to drop back and find some running room. And then he's going to be gone. For the keeper and the touchdown will be 7 0 by Dahlia. The Bulldogs try to get something going. Jamar Smith with a nice first down run here as he takes a few defenders with him, but that will lead to a turnover later on. So the Indians driving once again, and they drive it down the field, and it's going to be Devin Johnson who's going to punch it in. By Dahlia is for real. They shut out Toombs County 42 0, the final. A good one at MC Anderson Field on Friday night. Calvary Day taking on Bradwell Institute. Tigers, they're going to strike first. Trevin McCoy getting the call, and he's going to find the hole. Then he's going to find some green. McCoy going to pull away from the Cav defenders and go the distance for the touchdown. Bradwell on top, 7 to nothing. The Tigers looking for more later in the first quarter. They are throwing deep, but the Cavs going to come up with an interception near the goal line. Calvary's offense then getting to work. Salvador Calderon to Robert Hayward for the first down. Then early in the second quarter, the Cavs tie things up on a quarterback sneak by Calderon. It's going to be a 7-7 game, but Bradwell responds. Isaiah Barnes gets the call. He's going to make his way to the end zone, giving the visitors the 14-7 lead. Calvary scores a late touchdown and wins this one 28-21, the final. New Hampshire taking on Groves. This one will be scoreless in the first. The Groves defense making some noise, though, to start this one off. Daniel Prescott in on the tackle for the loss. It would turn the ball over to the Rebels. Ensuing drive, and the handoff is going to go to Devin Nixon. And Nixon is going to go and pick up a couple of nice blocks, and then he is just off to the races. In for the touchdown. Groves is going to go up 7 to nothing, but they're not done yet. Later on, a short pass to Trayvon Johnson, and he's going to pick up some good yardage and the first down. Later on, a goal line carry goes to Samuel Stevens, who gets six on this drive. All Groves in this one. They win 32 to 7, the final. And there's a look at what happened on Friday night in the high school football world. Coming up next on uh, Gridiron Live right here at Wild Wing Cafe, a special guest, 
See that man in the green? That's Josh Mallard. He's played lots of football, every level. Benedictine, University of Georgia, several NFL teams. We're going to pick his brain coming up next. That's when Gridiron Live continues. Stick around. And welcome back to Gridiron Live, moving inside now, where we're joined by a special guest, former Benedictine cadet, former Georgia Bulldog, for, I can't even name all the teams you played for in the NFL. It's a big list. It is a big list. Josh Mallard joins us here at Wild Wing Cafe. And Josh, first of all, it's the, the start of the NFL season. Do you uh, Does it bring back memories for you? Oh, of course. Um, I, I could just imagine how nervous some of these guys are, right? especially the young guys. But, um, you know, of course, you know, you watch these games, you get a little sad, but uh, I get to sit back at a place like this and uh, overdose on buffalo wings. Exactly, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, you couldn't overdose on buffalo wings several years back when you were playing for so many different NFL teams. What's your fondest memory of playing in the league? Man, there's there's so many memories. Um, you know, you get to you get to sit down and have lunch with people like Peyton Manning. You know, stuff like that. You, I, to me, that was the that was the coolest thing to pick those guys' brains. And talk about it. Coming out of Benedictine, where you were an all-state player, you go to the University of Georgia, have a great career there, and then to get drafted, go in the NFL. Uh, did you ever imagine your wildest dreams that you would have that kind of journey? You know, you know what? You always dream that, of course. But for it to actually happen, um, I think my parents were probably more excited than I was. But of course, I was excited, and it was a dream come true. And talk about it. Coming out of Benedictine, what did uh, what did the cadets, what did BC instill in you as you made the move to, to the next level? You know what? If I could go back to play any game. And my career would have been at BC. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, just being back here and being able to watch those games, that's like a dream come true for me. Exactly. Now, you still you, you played a little bit of arena football in the past couple of years. You, you moved back to Savannah, and there may be still some more uh, football in your future. What else are you doing? I have a business here, credit card processing. Um, a lot of my clients are here. So, uh, you know, I have to, I, my business career started at 33. So um, just working on that is what I'm here for. We're talking about the NFL season getting underway. Any early picks? You, you, got, you like anybody in particular? Don't necessarily with the spreads today, but looking for the season, you got any early? I had a chance to see Seattle. They looked pretty good the other night. You know, I, I just hope that the local teams win. I hate looking on my Facebook and seeing people complaining about the Falcons, the Bulldogs, uh, BC. If those three teams win, my life is going to be a lot happier. <laughs> Very good. And talk about the Falcons. Of course, uh, you played uh, spent some time up at the Georgia Dome. Uh, talk about your time with the Falcons. You know, Falcons was a great opportunity for me because uh, my parents are really close. Uh, all my friends got to come watch me play, and that's obviously when you when you make it to that level, that's what you want to have happen. Very good. I think Josh Mallard's going to be hanging out with us some more in future episodes, maybe in a, in a different little spin, but you'll have to stick around to see that here in the coming weeks. Josh Mallard, former BC cadet, former Georgia Bulldog, and NFL player as well. Josh, thanks so much for coming to hang out with us this Sunday morning. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, guys, plenty more. We're going to introduce you to this week's Enmark Player of the Week and the candidates for this week's winner. All that and much more coming up on Gridiron Live, live from Wild Wing Cafe. Stick around. And welcome back to Wild Wing at Cafe. We're here live in City Market. And we already talked about the high school football games yep. that happened this week. And with that, you come some great plays, players that had some good days out on the field. In fact, uh, one guy, this week's Enmark Player of the Week, was a guy who last season had over 2,000 yards rushing. He's a big-time college recruit. And he's a heck of a guy over there in Toombs County at Toombs County High School. Let's go ahead and catch up with Jamar Smith, the Enmark Player of the Week. The Toombs County Bulldogs found themselves in an early hole last Thursday against Johnson. The Adams Smashers would jump out to a 14-0 first half lead, but Toombs would rally behind senior running back Jamar Smith, the Enmark Player of the Week. Halftime went in there, coach talks, when we got everything, everybody got their mind right and came out the third and fourth quarter and we just realized and did our jobs and got the win. Smith would run for 205 yards and three touchdowns in the Bulldogs' 26-21 win over the Adams Smashers. It was really important to start the season. You know, it really feels good to start off your senior year with a win. I mean, going out there just showing everybody what Tombs kind of new season is about, new team is about. I mean, just showing them that we ain't playing no games this year. It really does feel good. Racking up the yardage on the ground is nothing new for Tombs County or Smith. As a junior, the All-State selection went for over 2,000 yards rushing on the season. With play like that, it's no wonder why this bruising back is being heavily recruited by the likes of Georgia Tech. It really feels good to know I'm an important part of the squad. Just to know that I have to work harder this year. You know, in the weight room, in class, and on the field, and I have to practice. Just to know, just to put in the extra work. You know that the team's on my back this year. And know that we're going to carry them all the way. All right, let's go.
go ahead and take a look at this week's candidates for the Enmark Player of the Week. Going to start off with a guy who had a big game back on Thursday night. Memorial Day would knock off Bethesda out at Garden City Stadium. And you had McKinley Hambershap had a huge game. How about 291 yards and four touchdowns in the win for the Blue Thunder? And RTCA's Rico Rogers said he has a lot of these stellar games, but this was a big one for him on Friday night. 384 yards and five touchdowns in their win against Bullock Academy. Then we go to Malik Williams. He had 176 total yards, three touchdowns, and one interception in Portal's win. And over then Trulin over Trulin, that, that was a big win for Portal. And then. Lufton's quarterback, Alex Davis, he had 182 total yards of offense, two touchdowns, and Bluffton's win over Buford. And as always, you can go to our website, WJCL.com, make your selection. There's a tab, Enmark Player of the Week. There's a story that you can click on, so go and pick who you think should be this week's Enmark Player of the Week. A lot of good guys that had a lot of good games out there. That's right. We'll introduce you to this week's winner coming up on Wednesday, WJCL News at 6. Plenty more to come here at uh, Green Iron Live. We're going to catch up with some of the, the crew here at Wild Wing Cafe and talk about some of the specials they got working on this football season. You're watching Green Iron Live. It's the ground. Chicken and waffles, just one of the, uh, the plates they got going on here. Brunch being served at Wild Wing Cafe. Chicken and waffles looking good. Ladies, what, what do you got for us now right here? This is our new um, football menu. We've got sriracha nachos and the uh, pesto shrimp flatbread. All right, so you got the, the nachos, you got that. Some flatbreads, a lot of new things here at Wild Wings. So not just about wings anymore. You got a brunch menu, you like got a the, lunch. I mean, menu. the killer kickoffs just for football season. Of course, you catch all your NFL action here. They have more TVs than. Um, than we do at WJCL, that's for sure. <laughs> so you get any game you want. They have a full menu full of killer kickoff uh, menu items. We do have brunch like chicken and waffles. Also want to remind you guys that we have the wing eating contest starting next week here. What we're going to do is each week we're going to have a wing eating contest. You need to come down to Wild Wing Cafe all that's week right. long. Register. We're going to draw a couple names each week, and then we're going to go a uh, wing eating contest live for four weeks. And then at the end of that four weeks, we're going to have the championship round where you could win, we like to say, a year's worth of wild wing food. And you. Wings. I think it's like $1,600. Yeah, $1,600 worth of wings. And then also, if you win that week, you also get a little prize as well just for coming in and winning that week, not even the first week. Yeah, it's a $25 gift card if you win that day, and then you get to come back and compete for the free supply things. Very good. So if you like wings, you like football, go ahead and come on down. Register for the wing eating contest. We're going to start it next week. So go ahead. We, we love to have you. And I, I, I promise I'm not eating in this yeah. competition. Yeah, I don't know if you're allowed. I don't know if that would be I don't fair. I know, but I am going to eat some of this uh, chicken <laughs> and biscuits, and she's going to do some of that flatbread. Right, I'm going to do some of this. hang out because the NFL on Fox is coming up next. Thanks for joining us this week for Gridiron Live, live from Wild Wing Cafe. We're here each and every Sunday right. morning with our friends at Wild Wing We don't Cafe. always eat, but we're going to eat today. No, we <laughs> we might eat. always eat. <laughs> again, good food. Check out the new menu for football season full of killer kickoff food <laughs> items. Yeah, try talking with... Yeah, that was not, that's why I didn't take a bite. But you talk for a couple minutes. Okay, yeah, there's, a, yeah, as I said, a lot of great food here. Brunch is is already going. You can get that until 2 or 3 o'clock. So you can come down here, you can get brunch, and you can stay and get lunch and dinner. So we got a lot, but reporting, we're live here for a while at Wild Wing Cafe in City Market for Gridiron Live. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next week.